Hello and welcome you here with me, Cherry Tumblr. And in this video, we're going to show you how to start the Harrier. There are two settings to check before you do. If you go into special for the Harrier, um, I would recommend using INS default alignment as pre-aligned. It saves you about two minutes and just stops you having to type in a long number. And I would use the easy mode TDC. And what that does is when you're moving your TDC cursor around, it will automatically designate a target when you stop moving the cursor around. It just saves you a little bit of time. So here we are inside our Harrier. First thing to note is even though we're on an airfield, we have wheel chocks on. It all starts with wheel chocks. So we need to remember to take those off at some point. Let's get this thing started. Battery on over your left shoulder. Turn the handle down, flick the deck switch up, oxygen on, fuel pumps with a right click, both on, and then engine start. Going to get a lot of warnings, just turn those off. I'm going to close the canopy. At this point, your RPM engine, RPM should be going up. If it isn't, it's because you've maybe the throttle has been banged. Um, and not slightly, so we need to just put it back into idle, which is right windows and T, I believe, which will put it back into idle. Once it goes up to 92, you just need to touch the throttle up and down again, just a tiny bit, like that, and that, there we go, and that, that'll get it going. While it's doing that, let's start up our, um, bring all our screens on. There are 10 round buttons, we're going to use nine of them for this one, so that's one, two, three, four, five, Six. That's just controls this panel, but I just get into habit of doing it all the time. Seven. Your RWR. Eight is your chaff and flares, and then underneath here is your HUD. Nine. Uh, this tenth one is if you have a jamming pod. That's something specific you have to put on. Um, but nine times out of ten, you're not going to be flying one, so you don't need it. Well, while we do that, we'll get rid of our uh, joystick control column, and we're going to align the INS. So. Um, I'll just do this to show you the, what we'll see on the screen. I'm going to turn the INS onto INS ground, like so. And if I just get rid of the map to show you what we're looking for. So because we've done the quick alignment method, it automatically says the quality is 0 0.7 and we're OK. So we are good to go at this point. Let's just clear the alarm. So what you can do is straight away go to IFA. So when you start up, just click all the way to IFA and you should be good to go. And that's just telling you that the INS is doing its last little check and that will go off. There you go, like so. While we're down here, there are two switches we need to flick. The FLIR and DMT. And then we do the last little check around the cockpit. Um, the main thing is we'll put our flaps onto automatic. We'll put the nose wheel steering, sorry, the anti-skid onto on. And we'll leave the flaps up here in auto. Um, if we're going to do a short or vertical takeoff, there are some changes to those, and I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but other than that, um, altimeter, may as well zero it. Put a uh, bingo fuel value in, I don't know, two or three thousand, doesn't really matter, just to give you a reminder. And then down here, I'm going to turn on the standby radio to transmit and guard, and arm the seat. The only other thing you might want to do is if you are trying to do internal lights, this is your internal light panel. And if you're doing external lights, this is your external lights. And the way they work is they have like a master switch. So you turn them all on. Oh, make sure they're all on. Um, if we look outside the plane, there are no lights on the plane at the moment. Um, what you have then is this master switch, which makes it really easy to turn everything on and off. And that's is in off. And night vision goggle mode. Oh, there we go, right click. And then day normal mode. And we can see now. There we go, we've now got some flashing lights and wingtip lights. And the great thing is, is once you're uh, approaching the enemy and you're fencing in, you can just click them off. And that, that is the Harrier startup. Okay, I've put some weapons on the Harrier and we're going to taxi out. So the first thing we have to always remember to do is take off the wheel chocks. Now you can actually do this at any point, um, certainly if you're on a, uh, not on an aircraft carrier or a um, landing Chief, ship. Remove the wheel chocks. Copy. There go the wheel chocks. And then wheel to taxi out, the last thing we need to do is this lever here is our parking brake. So we just click that to take off the parking brake. 
and taxi as normal. Um, the nose wheel steering, it says caster at the moment. Uh, we're not in full nose wheel steering mode, so it has the nose wheel steering as normal, very much like an F18. Press and hold, and you can turn it. If you were on a, uh, if you needed to do really tight turns, then you would flick the anti skid down to nose wheel steering, and then it actually gives you nose wheel steering high as, a, as a, another option. Let's find the uh, runway. And we will quickly get airborne. Nose wheel steering on. Okay, quick chat about getting airborne. Um, this is our engine power, the RPM, think of it as a, as a percent. So this is 28.5% power. You can actually overpower the engine to about 120%, something like that, but it's gonna damage your engine and um, you don't wanna do it for very long. And what will happen is when we get airborne, there's a diamond appears in here around this J, sorry. Um, sorry, a uh, hexagon will appear around it. And if that hexagon is all the way around, it means that we're, we're overstressing the engine. So we need to kind of keep it below 100% if we can. We have this here, which is called the Witch's Hat. What we're gonna do is when we get airborne, these little markers will come down. And we wanna put the bottom of the Witch's Hat in these markers, and then that gives us our angle for departure. So all I'm gonna do, whack up the throttle to about 100%. I'm not carrying a lot, I've only got four Mavericks. Um, oh, don't know if we could just too much. So we're at 100%, release the wheel brakes. Trundle down the runway. It rotates at about 160, 180, depending on your payload. Just a little bit of nose wheel. Pulling back at 160. Put that little witch's hat in between the two little markers. Gear up. Turn off the warnings. You will want to bind a key for the warning because it it warns all the time and then what I'm going to do is AFC that's autopilot assist in a way and then I can just let go of the joystick and we're often doing our thing the other button next to it is altitude hold um, as long as you're relatively level it will let you go just get this into altitude hold into altitude hold and that's it you then go into nav mode or air to ground mode and go do your sorting. Okay, I've respawned in my Harrier still with the four Mavericks and in this instance I'm going to do a short takeoff. Um, I'm still in the spawning area and I'm going to just take off across the runway here which is plenty of distance. So we need to make a few small changes to the setup. We need to um, put that into down mode which if you can see underneath here it says STO for short takeoff and landing. I'm going to put the HO which is a water pump to help us going to put that into, sorry, takeoff, which is at the top. Um, I've also got my nozzles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a nozzle block on. So this little black handle here, I'm going to left click until it says 55. And that way when I hit the nozzle down button, it won't go past 55. And why 55, you might wonder, if you push V rest, uh, STO for short takeoff, it then tells you the information. So that may say 60, it may say 50, but 99% of the time it says 55 on a standard loadout. Show you that one there, sorry. The nozzle, 55. So all I'm gonna do, same as before, wheel brakes on, but I'm gonna go over 100% on this time with the power. Um, I've taken the parking brake off. Gonna go full power, and we should start seeing the little jet pipe diamond as well. So here's the, sorry, there's the hexagon. So we're, we're putting a lot of power in. I'm about ready to go, doing about 80 or 90, going to push the nozzles down to 55 and up we go and then as soon as I can, save my engine, get it down below 100% and then slowly bring up the nozzles. So now we're at 20% on the nozzles here. Also says it in the HUD there, 26N. Keep bringing it up. And we're good to go. Ooh, accidentally hit the throttle there. 
and same as before, waiter's hat to get your climb established, autopilot assist on, and we're able. Once you're established and happy, don't forget, put your gear up. You can put your flaps back to auto, make sure the pump is off, and carry on your flight as normal. And the final takeoff is going to be a vertical takeoff. And for this, we have a couple of considerations to take into account. First of all, weight. Our maximum weight can be 2,500 pounds. So I, to get that for this one, this example, uh, I can only carry two Mavericks. Can't carry a teapot because it's it's quite heavy, and I'm down to 50% fuel. Um, you could probably get to about 52%, I guess, but just 50 is enough. Um, for this takeoff, if you're high, heavier than 2,500, you're just going to drag across the floor, and it's going to be embarrassing. Request rearming. There'll be nothing that can do. Copy. A couple of things we need to set up for the vertical takeoff. Very much like the short takeoff, we're going to put the flaps to short takeoff. We're going to put the water to take off. Again, that increases the power, which is nice. Um, we don't need a nozzle block because we're going to put our nozzles down to 82 degrees, you can see here, 82 degrees nozzle, 62% um, percent flat, which is perfect, and I think the armourers have finished armouring, wheel trucks are away, rearming complete. there's the rearming complete, so we're going to take the park and brake off, we're going to increase the power, and then what I'm going to do is, as we get airborne, um, I need to convert that vertical power into horizontal flight, so you will see me moving the nozzles back down towards zero after I dip my nose and we kind of move forward. So the main thing to watch here is the speed up here and the either nozzle number watching it here or here as we transition. Let's give it a go. We're definitely going to overheat our engine so we will see the hexagon and that's what the water is for. We have 500 pounds of water and as the as the water is used to cool the engines that number will start going down. So it won't use it at 96% power but when we go over 100 it is going to start using it. So let's go. Increase the power. As you can see, we're now in vertical flight. Put the nose down. We want to start transitioning from vertical to horizontal. The water is being used. We can see the green W down here, saying we're using water, and we can see the numbers going down. I'm going to start bringing the nozzle up. Again, doing that transition from vertical to horizontal. To about 10%. And once we're established in that flight, we get the power down as soon as we think it's safe to do so. Bring the landing gear up. Altitude, altitude. Turn off the low altitude alarm. And then clean our plane up. Flaps back to auto. Water to Al off. And fly on a merry way. So we did the start up. We did a standard takeoff, a short takeoff, and a vertical takeoff. If you have any questions about the startup and takeoff, then feel free to comment in the uh, comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the sky. Stay safe.